this video what I want to do is show you how to create a subroutine and control it within your main program. So what we want to do is we want to come up to our main program which is under our main tasks where our main routine is located and we want to right click and select new routine and we're going to create the routine name we'll just call it warning light one. Okay, you can enter a description if you want describing what this is actually giving you a warning about. It's up to you. Then you have to select your type. We're going to use ladder diagram, but if you wanted to make a function block diagram, sequential or structured text, this is where you would select it because your main routine is always a ladder diagram. Okay, so if you want to have a fun one of these other three languages, you have to have a subroutine in there to do it. So then we hit OK, and you have now created a subroutine, which in this case is blank. Okay. So now we have to be able to jump to that subroutine. And to do that, we need to be in the program control bin. Now, once you're in that, what you're going to look for is your jump to subroutine instruction. I'll drop this down here. And then you want to just, in your routine name, you want to go ahead and start typing in warning light 1. You hit enter. Now you can set your input parameters and return parameters. That's a little bit beyond the scope of this video. So what we're going to do is we're just going to remove these. And a lot of people do this out in the field. They'll just remove those parameters. So now we have our jump to subroutine. So if I go ahead and I'll just add some generic logic in here. So now all I have is that subroutine. Now what I can do is I have to decide, do I want my subroutine to be controlled and only read sometimes, or do I want it to be read all the time? So if I want my subroutine to be read all the time, you wouldn't put an input in front of here. As you turn your main program on, it will jump to your subroutine every time it is running through the scan. But if you do want your subroutine to be controlled, you would treat this subroutine just like normal output. So I would come here, I'd grab this, and I'd just go toggle one, whatever your input logic you'd want to activate that subroutine. Let's say a timer goes off or something like that. Then this toggle will have to be activated for this subroutine to be turned on. And that is a very quick introduction to subroutines in RS Logix 5000. Some people will say that you're going to want to add in your subroutine instruction here to let you know that this is a subroutine and some people will always want you to put in a return okay if you want those parameters to match up with what is going on in your main routine totally up to you. Some people put these in there as a precaution. Um, I hope this answered some of your basic questions about the jump to subroutine. Thank you very much.